Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and you're currently looking at a system of two pulsars. This is a binary system in Universe Sandbox Square that has two pulsars known as Halsey and Taylor. Now, in this video, I wanted to actually take a look at a hypothetical situation of a pulsar or a neutron star, which these are, approaching our planet Earth and wanted to basically find out what actually is going to happen to our planet if one of them accidentally makes it to our neighborhood. Welcome to What The Math. Now before I started, I wanted to actually show you how tiny these neutron stars are. So what I'm holding in my uh, hands right now is Earth. And this is Earth in comparison to one of these neutron stars. One of these things is really tiny. It's basically the size of a city. It's approximately 12 kilometers in radius. This one here is about 12 as well. So that's about 24 or even less kilometers in diameter. In other words, these are very, very small objects where a lot of mass has actually been sort of contained in a very small area. And because of this, uh, space-time here is really, really warped, and so if you actually stand on the surface of um, a neutron star, this is what uh, you would see. You would actually see a very strange world where everything is sort of uh, projected in one single window. And obviously you would probably be squished into a pancake and killed, but that's another story. Anyway, so if I were to place Earth here, um, it would most likely be destroyed, because this is a little bit too hot for Earth to exist, but let's find out what's going to happen if I actually do place it here. And so there's our planet Earth right next to these two uh, pulsars, and I'm going to accelerate time just a little bit to see what happens. Now, first of all, because these are pulsars, they have these projections from both directions, which um, project highly, highly, highly radioactive, highly energized um, streams, uh, jets of particles. And if one of them hits our Earth, uh, we're all pretty much dead. It's going to strip our atmosphere and destroy everything on it. But uh, what about the rest, though? What's going to happen to the planet if it stays here for a little bit long or longer than, you, than it should stay here. And you'll notice that it's going to start overheating and possibly break into little pieces. And this is what we're actually going to be talking about. This is um, a topic that I've talked about previously related to an idea of Roche um, lobes, or specifically here, we're talking about the effects of tides or tidal effects from various uh, dense objects. And this is why our Earth is currently basically falling apart. It's uh, being stripped of particles and it's sort of becoming um, some sort of an asteroid belt. But at the same time, Earth kind of got lucky and actually was able to escape that orbit and is now sort of just a very hot, very interesting looking object. Anyway, so that's not what we're going to be talking about here. We're actually going to recreate this from scratch. We're going to place Earth right here somewhere. And um, we're going to have a neutron star, or I guess a pulsar, there's a bunch of them available right here on the bottom, um, fly through the system here. And I'm actually going to also have moon in there as well. Um, and we're going to see what's actually going to happen. So let's start with a relatively close passage uh, within about the orbit of the moon. So we're going to launch a pulsar. And I think I'm going to just launch a crab pulsar because it's uh, one of the most famous pulsars and it's also the one I've recently talked about in one of the previous videos. We're going to launch it at a speed of about uh, 20 kilometers per second and it's going to be passing right around here where the moon's orbit is as well. And so the distance from Earth currently is about 5 million kilometers and it's going to be approaching our planet um, at a distance of about 300,000 kilometers. But as you can see, it's so tiny and it's so hard to see um, that basically it's not going to really produce much heat and much um, radiation. Unless, of course, it's a pulsar that's going to be uh, ejecting its particle jets toward us. But other than that, it's actually not going to warm up our planet very much. As a matter of fact, the temperature here is probably going to start decreasing because... Uh, oh, or not. Maybe not. Maybe it is going to slowly increase. We'll just keep the temperature graph here for now, and we'll see what happens. Uh, because this is actually a star after all, and so it does produce some radiation. Anyway, so we're going to take a look at two things here. First, we're going to take a look at the temperature. And I'm going to put the temperature graph right here on top. And we're also going to take a look at the tidal effect. So, uh, right around here... We're going to start seeing tidal heating effects, which are already increasing, and also um, Roche lobe radius, which is slowly decreasing. And as soon as it reaches the uh, number that's basically less than the radius of the actual planet, that's when our planet will start 
slowly uh, deconstructing. It's going to start falling apart. Uh, Rouge lobes are a concept I've previously talked about in one of the videos as well, so you can definitely check it out on the channel. But let's actually see um, what's going to start happening here in terms of the actual heating effects, because uh, this looks like it might uh, be warming up our planet as well. And uh, by the way, the actual pulsar is right there and it's still quite far away from our planet. So basically, this is a hypothetical approach of a pulsar that's going to possibly never happen. Now, the thing is, for this to occur, this is just, uh, it's close to impossible. First of all, pulsars are not very common. They're relatively rare objects. And second of all, um, even neutron stars are not very common. They're they're still quite rare. And um, second of all, for uh, an object like this to approach our planet, it would have to actually uh, be somewhere in the vicinity of our solar system, obviously, and be somehow influenced by our sun, because all of these objects are, at least the ones we know, are quite, quite far away from us. And uh, the most likely scenario to happen here is that maybe, just maybe, this might actually happen one day when Andromeda Galaxy um, decides to collide with a uh, Milky Way Galaxy. Basically, in about 2.5 billion years, which is um, not very soon, actually, uh, our two galaxies will collide. And if Andromeda Galaxy has a lot of pulsars or a lot of neutron stars, some of them might, um, by accident, approach our solar system relatively close. They won't collide with anything, but they might pass through our solar system. Now, the chance for that is still very, 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 very low. As a matter of fact, you're more likely to win a lottery several times in a row than to actually have this happen. Uh, but uh, it's, you know, it's not impossible. Now, look at the temperature. It's actually started climbing suddenly because I think the pulsar is getting closer and closer to us. And I think most of this temperature is actually not from the radiation, but from the tidal heating effects. As you can see right here, it's suddenly increasing quite a lot. As a matter of fact, uh, I'm going to actually put the, another graph right here that will show you the increase in tidal um, heating effects. And they're actually quite drastic. As you can see, the temperature has suddenly started climbing and will climb higher and higher as the pulsar approaches um, our planet Earth which is uh, still kind of habitable, actually. But as you can see, this is actually becoming an exponential growth. So it's going to start dramatically changing the surface of our planet. And the blue hue that you see, the blue color that suddenly uh, is more prominent, is probably from the fact that the pulsar, in this case, is a very, very bright, whitish blue color as well. Now, the tidal heating effects are... Oh, look at that. Something started happening. The tidal effects on our planet Earth have suddenly released fragments. This is really, really interesting. Um, that's something that I didn't expect seeing, actually. But uh, the temperature is dramatically climbing as well. Look at that. Look at the temperature on our planet. That is ridiculous. And it looks like we had a bit of a collision that I totally missed. Apparently, the pulsar collided with the moon, or I guess the moon smacked into the pulsar. And it's now a miniature star, and that's actually why the temperature of our planet Earth has uh, suddenly started to increase as well. Not exactly what I um, what I was planning to do, but yeah, I think, I think that's the end of this particular part of the simulation. Let's do this again. We totally shouldn't have put the moon in there. And so here we go, so there are the graphs that are suddenly becoming exponential again, and the pulsar is right there, it's still kind of far away from us, uh, but I'm going to wait for, oh no, I lost one of my graphs, uh, I'm going to wait for Earth to start deforming before I showing you um, at what distance this is actually is going to occur, so um, we're going to take a look at some of these um, numbers right here, so there's something called tidal stress magnitude, and in this case it's already at 0 0.1, point, uh, 0.12, which is a very, very high tidal stress that we'd never experience, which means that, well, first of all, there's going to be a lot of tsunamis going on, a lot of uh, tidal waves, and at the same time, uh, the tidal heating effects are increasing the temperature of our planet already. And this is within what? Uh, within only a few hours of the passage of the pulsar at a relatively close distance, actually. Well, so here, this is only about 3 million uh, kilometers away, so uh, about 10 times the distance of uh, Moon from Earth. And so it's not very far away, but as you can see, the effects here are so dramatic that uh, there's going to be already a lot of destruction and a lot of death going on on the surface of our planet. Let's actually maybe move this a little bit away. And uh, so the temperature is increasing, the tidal stress is increasing, the tidal heating effects are dramatic. So here a lot of, um, a lot of basically ground is rubbing against each other, creating a lot of heat on the inside. Volcanoes are erupting, tsunamis are everywhere, and 
we're about to reach tidal stress magnitude of 1 and guess what's going to happen when, we, when that occurs. And so we're now at the point where the tidal effects are so strong that basically everything on the planet starts getting reshaped and there come the first um, rocks that start flying off the surface. This is essentially the effects of spaghettification due to the tidal effects of the pulsar that's really really close to us now. I'm going to actually decrease this into milliseconds and basically this is at a distance of what? About 40,000 kilometers, so basically uh, same distance as the uh, satellites in geostationary orbit um, around our planet Earth and obviously about eight times closer than um, than the distance to the moon, but this actually will occur much 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 sooner So uh, in this game it occurs usually when the objects are relatively close to each other, but um, at this point basically the um, Roche lobes of our planet are very very tiny So everything outside of those Roche lobes is going to escape and smack into crab pulsar, which is right here And so this is how our planet will start losing its mass if you're on the surface of the planet right now You're probably going to be uh, flying off into this pulsar and getting squished and uh, basically destroyed in a very very painful spaghettification way. Doesn't sound very pleasant to me. Now before we actually get smacked into the pulsar, I just wanted to take a look at some of the stats here. So tidal, tidal heating effects have actually increased the temperature to like 3800 degrees Celsius. Um, the tidal stress at this point is so strong that basically the entire planet will very very likely get stretched and squeezed and every single particle even uh, will not be able to essentially survive and will get spaghettified. So these chunks are a little bit too large, they're going to be much much smaller, this is going to be subatomic particles almost. Um, but uh, look at how beautiful this all is, this is essentially the effects of a crab pulsar attracting our planet and essentially destroying it. Now we're going to try this again, but this time in the, in, inside the solar system, with other planets present. Uh, but I think at this point it's going to essentially attract our planet Earth and turn this into some sort of a star, right? Just like I did with the moon, because I think the Earth is actually being sucked into the pulsar. Uh, the pulsar is just flying by itself, but the Earth is being pulled into it, and there we go. This is an Earth star now. It's a star that's about 1.24 uh, masses of sun, but this is not very realistic because this wouldn't actually happen. Instead, what would actually occur is that the Earth would get absorbed by the pulsar, some of the particles would get thrown off by these particle jets, and the rest of the planet would just combine with the actual total mass of the neutron star. So that's essentially what would occur, but let's try this again, but this time let's actually go into our solar system and maybe launch a pulsar, um, I don't know, like let's just say it passes through this area right here. Something that uh, is still very unlikely to happen, but you never know, you never know. In the next trillions of years, maybe it would actually occur. And we're gonna pick Crab Pulsar just because why not? It's going to move at a velocity of about 40 kilometers per second. And we're going to decrease um, the time into hours per second here and launch it right between um, Jupiter and Mars. So here it comes. And you'll notice that, um, well, actually, let's, let's just go to Earth. We're gonna go to Earth and see what happens to the climate on the planet of Earth. As you can see, there's a bit of illumination from this side. This is from the pulsar. So now on the other side of the planet, when it's nighttime, you're going to actually be able to see unusual pulsar effects as well. Now we're going to just look at the um, tidal stress effects here, uh, which are basically right here, tidal heating effects. And we want to see how high the tidal stress magnitude will actually become here. Now let's accelerate time a little bit more. We're going to see what's going to happen to the surface of the planet, to the rest of the solar system, and basically um, try to sort of predict what's actually going to happen here in a few uh, few weeks, I guess. I think it only only take it a couple of weeks to go through this um, solar system, or I guess a couple of months uh, as it flies through our solar system. And so, first thing is that obviously all of the objects will start getting attracted to it. Um, the orbits will shift dramatically, our planet Earth is very likely to lose its stable orbit as well, and um, some objects might actually get attracted to the crab pulsar, and it might end up capturing some of the planets, which would be very interesting. But as you can see, even the sun is attracted to it right now, and it's flying into the um, pulsar's direction. Now I'm going to accelerate time a little bit more, and there it comes, it's going to pass through the uh, plane of orbits, 
and there we go and so look at that so all of the planets including earth and mars have actually kind of flown away but it's not over yet because crab pulsar is still in the area although the temperature of our planet seems to have actually increased quite dramatically but not because of crab pulsar because it's actually so close to the sun now so the sun is dramatically increasing the temperature but interestingly the tidal effects though are not very large because the pulsar is quite far away from us so the only way the tidal effects would destroy our planet is if suddenly crab pulsar was actually um really close again within about the orbit of the moon so this is essentially what would actually happen if earth and any kind of a pulsar or neutron star would be within that range so it looks like everything's here just kind of changed orbits uh nothing really disappeared i believe everything is still in the orbit around the sun mars has a very interesting eccentric orbit earth uh changed its orbit to the point where the climate on the, um, on the planet earth has increased by the average of about 10 degrees or maybe 15 degrees and uh its actual orbit now is not only much closer to the sun, but it's also very eccentric, meaning that the seasonal changes on our planet are going to be very, very extreme. And we might be able to observe this here if I go into uh, the planet here. Oh, actually, we might not even have any winter anymore because it's actually so hot. So that's kind of like uh, having, you know, average temperature of about 70 degrees Celsius on the, in the tropics and about maybe 10 to 20 degrees Celsius right here um, in the Arctic and the Antarctic, which doesn't actually exist anymore. It's now a continent that we're probably going to be living on because that's going to be the only tolerable area in, on the entire surface. And anyway, so that's kind of all I wanted to take a look at. And before we finish this video, let's actually maybe do this one more time. We're going to place Earth and launch a pulsar right here and just take a look at uh, the effects of spaghettification that will occur on our planet Earth right as we finish in this video. Anyway, thank you so much for watching, guys. I hope you learned something from this video, and I hope you enjoyed watching this. And if you did enjoy watching this, don't forget to subscribe, don't forget to share this video, and consider uh, possibly sub supporting this channel on Patreon, because it does help me get better equipment to make better videos. I'll see you guys in the next video. Game you later. And I'm sorry, Earth, I've destroyed you again. See you later, guys. Bye-bye.